Hey everyone, this is 14.3 Measures of Dispersion. Uh, last section we talked about finding the center of your data, a couple different ways you could do that. And in this section we're going to focus on um, the spread of your data or the variation. And there's a great example here on page 727 that kind of um, shows us why we need this. So um, I'll give you kind of the short version. You're a, you're a doctor, you're trying to pick out pacemakers, and you're looking at battery life. And you've got battery A that has a mean an average uh, lifetime of 45,000 hours. Battery B has a, a mean time of 46,000 hours. So just looking at the means, you would want to take battery B. Um, but they say, what, um, it says, what if we do some more digging and we find out that um, all of A's times were within, were within 500 of the mean. Right, so A was 45,000, right? So that means you could go 45,500 on the high end or 44,500 on the low end. But B's times varied widely. In fact, some of B's times were as much as 2,500 hours below the mean. So that 46,000, you could be um, 2,500 below that average, right? So if you subtract that, you'll get 43,500. That's the low end um, for battery B. Um, obviously, we just checked, and we saw that uh, for battery A, the low end is 44,500. So just looking at the mean um, doesn't tell you exactly, it doesn't inform you on which, which decision you should make. Depending on the variation, one might actually be better or worse. Um, to kind of hammer this home, too, look at these two data sets down here at the bottom, X and Y. These both have a mean of 25, mean and median of 25. This one makes sense because all the values are very close to 25. This one, it's hard to see, but if you actually add them up and if you actually average these two, which would be how you'd find the median, you will get 25. 25 doesn't have much to do with this data, though. So this data has a very low variation, a very low spread. This data has a very high spread. So basically, when you're looking at a data set, a lot of times you're just given statistics about it, like the mean, median, mode, or also some type of variation. And you're supposed to use both of these together to make some type of informed decision. So clearly, from these examples here, mean, median, and mode, the measures of central tendency, aren't enough necessarily um, to make all your decisions. So we're going to look at some um, measures of dispersion that are trying to measure the spread of our data. So like this set X has a very low spread, right? It just goes from 24, 25, and 26. This one has a pretty high spread. So the first measure of dispersion we're going to talk about is range. And this is really simple, and unfortunately it's not that useful, and we'll see why in a second. Um, but the range is simply the maximum minus the minimum value. So I have a little example here of a set of data. Got some twos, a three or four, and a 100. And if we're going to calculate the range, we're going to take the maximum value of 100, subtract off the minimum value 2, and get 98. That is the range of this data. Now, obviously, um, this doesn't help very much because 100 is kind of an outlier for this set. Most of the data is from 2, 3, and 4. And then you have this one value 100 that's going to throw off your range, essentially. So if you were to just look at the the, the range or look at the kind of dispersion and go off the range you'd see oh it has a range of 98 this data must kind of vary pretty largely but when you actually look at the set um, most of the values are pretty close together so we say that range is sensitive to outliers that 100 was an outlier and if you have a really large value or a really small value it's gonna throw off your your spread or your dispersion a little bit so basically we need a better measure of dispersion than range so we're going to do um, what's called the standard deviation. This is essentially the average distance from the mean. So you're going to take each value, subtract it from the mean to get the, uh, the distance, and then you're going to kind of do some work to create an average. It's not exactly an average, but it's kind of, a, um, kind of like that. This is the formula. It's a little bit scary looking. Remember, this is uh, sigma. That means sum of. So you're going to take each value, subtract it from the mean. You're going to square it to make sure it's positive, and then add them all up. So this is kind of like the total distance from the mean. And then you're going to divide by n minus 1, which is sort of how many values you have, but it has a minus 1 in there. It's a little complicated. It's kind of out of the scope of this class, but this is sort of like having the average. Um, and since you squared it, at the end, you have to go back and take the square root. So if you want to compute this by hand, um, you kind of break it up into three steps. The first thing you have to do is you have to find the mean, right? Because we're finding the average distance from the mean for each piece. So you need to find x bar, your mean. Next, you need to go through and you need to take each value, subtract it from the mean, and square it for every single value in the set. Once you get all of those, you're going to add them all up. So add up all those distances squared. You're going to divide that by n minus 1. It's kind of like taking the, um, the actual average. 
but then you have to take the square root because you're technically getting the square of the answer that you're after. So here's an example on page three, uh, 734, number 4. We have a pretty small set of data here, and um, it's still not a very nice thing to have to do by hand. I've already done some uh, entries for you, so you didn't have to watch me write each line over and over. So let's kind of walk through this first line here. First of all, this is your data over here. So these are just your data here, um, 8 through 9, essentially. And then um, for each, oh, the first thing you have to do, though, since you're doing x minus the mean, is you have to calculate the mean. So down here, the easiest way to do that is, since you have all your data here, add them all up, right? The sum of all your values, in this case, is 48. And then if you want the mean, remember, it's the, num uh, the sum of the values divided by how many you have. And if you count these, there are eight of them. So sum divided by n equals 6. That is our mean here. So in our first line, 8 is our value, and we're going to subtract it from the, or subtract the mean from it, and we get 2. So that is the distance from the mean. The next thing you have to do is take that value and square it. Remember up here, x minus x bar, that's exactly what we're calculating over here. So our distance is 2, so this is 2 squared. 2 squared is 4, so that's our entry over here. And you're going to go through and do that for each value. 4 minus 6 is negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4, 7 minus 6, etc. So we'll do a couple just so you get the idea, but um, this can be pretty tedious. So this next 5 down here, we've got 5 minus 6, which is negative 1 again, and negative 1 squared is 1 again. Then we have 4 minus 6, which is negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4. And lastly, we have 9 minus 6, which is 3, and 3 squared, which is 9. So what we're going to add up here is the 4, the 4, the 1, the 0, 1, 1, 4, 9, etc. And we're going to throw that total down here, and I believe it should be 24. All right, so that's kind of the longest part of um, doing this by hand. And notice, this is a pretty small data set. Um, there's only 8 values. And most of the time, if you have a set of data that's only eight values large, you can't really say that much about whatever you're studying, right? You, you mostly want pretty large data sets. So you can imagine if you had 100 values and you had to do this huge table for each value, it would take a long time. Let's finish this off, and then we'll talk about um, how we're going to do it in the calculator. All right, so going back to our formula now, we have pretty much all the pieces we need. We just calculated the... Um, this piece here, the sum of all the x minus x bar squared, right, that's what the table got us, that was our 24. So if we plug that in, we have the square root of 24 over, and then n was 8, because there are 8 values, so it's 8 minus 1. So this is the square root of 24 over 7. So in the calculator, if you throw it in there, um, divide 24 over 7, then take the square root, you should get about, rounded to two decimal places, 1.85. And I think this is a pretty um, reasonable standard deviation. It's relatively low. It kind of, it's kind of saying that our data on average um, varies be about two points, right? So like if you look at some of our values, we have a 8, 4, 7, 6, 5, 5, 4, and 9. Um, some of those distances, like what's the largest one? I guess the range would be 9 minus 4, which is 5. So that's the largest distance, but many of them are one apart, some of them are two apart. 1.85 kind of sums up the, the average distance that these things are from the mean, which is 6. So usually, um, if you have a small standard deviation, that means your data was pretty close together. If you have a large uh, standard deviation, that means your data was kind of all over the place. Maybe you had some hundreds, maybe some twos or something, you know, um, a larger spread. So that's how you calculate standard deviation by hand. Um, I'm gonna. We already know how to calculate standard deviation on the calculator. That's using the one variable statistics, which I will review in just a second. Um, but on page 734, number 11, they want you to calculate a standard deviation from a frequency table. And if you recall from um, the last section, they wanted us to calculate the mean from a frequency table, and we had to use a slightly different formula. It involved this um, x times f and summing them all up. It was actually this divided by this, I believe. Um, which is pretty easy, but now we have a quite a bit more work to do. And again, the more values we have, the more complicated this is going to be. This is, in my opinion, nowadays, it's kind of sad to say, a little bit of impractical of something to do by hand, just because um, 
your data sets can get so large. This is kind of time consuming. There's so many little places you can make mistakes. Um, I would actually recommend you just do this entire problem um, on the calculator. So I can kind of sum it up for you. Basically, you're going to go through and take um, each x times f and put it here. So 3 times 1, uh, 4 times 0, enter those all here and add them up. Obviously, you should add those up as well. Um, by the way, if you have these two values, then you can just divide this divided by that and get your mean. So there's your mean. So for this next one, it's each x value minus the mean that you just calculated all the way down, just like we did in the um, last example. Then you square all those, just like we did in the last example. Then you have to take those values and multiply them by the frequencies because, uh, let's pick an example, 6 and 3. This is saying you have three sixes. So you can go through and you can find um, the difference between 6 and the mean, and you can square it, but that difference uh, occurs three times. So that's why you have to take that difference squared and multiply it by 3 in that case, because you have to account for all of those um, differences when you go to calculate your, your basically your average. So you have to fill out all these sections, then you have to add all these up, and then this is actually what goes in the numerator under the square root. You still divide it by n minus 1. n, by the way, you could get, remember, by adding up all your frequencies, so this will actually be n. So it'll be this divided by n minus 1, and then you take the square root. So that's a lot of work, and it's not very practical since we have calculators that can do it all for us. So um, I'm, gonna, I'm going to refresh you on how to do this on the calculator. You need to use the one variable statistics, so you need to press stat, go to edit, and then um, enter all your data. Now, for the last example, you can just enter the data because the data is all right there. In this example, the data is packed into this frequency table. So these are your values. You don't want to just go and enter a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Because what we actually have is 1, 2, 1, 3. We don't have any 4s, so you're actually not going to enter 4 at all. But then we have two fives, so your data is going to start out like this. You're going to enter a 2, press enter, a 3, press enter, you're going to skip 4. Then you're going to enter 5, enter, and 5, because you have two of them. And then you have three sixes, so 6, 6, 6, 4, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 4, 8, 3, 9, etc. So when you actually go to enter your data in the list, don't forget you have to enter these values however many times they appear in the frequency, right? So 4, 8, 3, 9, 2, 10s. So... Go to stat, go to edit, enter all your data, and make sure you unpack it using the frequencies. Then once you have all your data in there, you go back to stat, and you go right to calculate, and you choose one variable statistics. Um, remember last time I, I gave you the whole breakdown of what all those values are? SX is what you're after. This is your standard deviation. And obviously this is much, much simpler than going through this whole table. And there's a lot fewer places to make mistakes. In fact... The only place to make a mistake is entering the data. So it's really important, and in fact, I recommend once you get it all entered, um, go back and double check it, because that's pretty much the only mistake you can make here is entering the data wrong. And also, since um, there's not really a lot of work to show if you're going to do on the calculator, if you just give me the wrong answer, I can't really give you partial credit, right? So check your, check your entries before you go through and calculate your one variable statistics. Um, so in this case, actually, sorry, um, yeah, okay, that's it. <laughs> okay, so um, here on page 736, we have a problem number 28. Um, this is kind of a, a weird breakdown. They, they have some instructions that says that um, this professor is trying to assign grades based on the scale. So if you check out the scale, it's not so much about points, it's about... Um, grading the class based on the average of the class and the standard deviation. So first of all, your average is right in the middle. So if you score the average or close to the average of the class, you got yourself a C. Now if you score the average plus half a standard deviation, that's what this is saying, mean plus one half standard deviation, um, if you score above that, you can get a B. Or if you score above uh, the average plus one and a half standard deviations, you can get an A. So this is kind of a, an interesting way to break it down where your grades are all based on how everybody else in the class did. So what was the mean and what was the standard deviation? So for this problem 28, we have a list of class grades, and the question is, what grade does the person earning the 74, this one right here, what grade do they get? So in order to answer this question, the first thing we're going to have to do is find out what is the mean and what is the standard deviation. So mean and standard deviation, uh, again, you can just take this data and throw it right into the calculator, do what we just did last time, um, 
probably have to clear your old list, but go through, enter all the data, calculate your one variable statistics, and in this case, you should get a mean of 72 and a standard deviation of about 3.5. Okay, and again, those are just going to be given to you um, from the one variable statistics. Um, so first of all, our mean is 72, right? And the grade that we're looking at is 74. So the first thing to notice is that 72 is greater than 74, which is our mean. So that automatically means that on the scale, right, this is the mean, we're bigger than it. So we know we're not getting a D or F, so that's good. We're passing. We either have a C, B, or an A. So now the question is, are we above the mean plus half a standard deviation, or are we above the mean plus one and a half standard deviations? Well, to figure that out, we have to actually calculate those, those entries. What is the mean plus one half standard deviation? Well, quite literally, that is the mean, 72, plus one half, which I'm just going to call out 0.5, times the standard deviation, which is 3.5. That's mean plus one half of a standard deviation. Well, if you calculate this, this should be about 73.75. Well, our value that we're looking for, remember, was 74. So it looks like 74 is going to be somewhere on this side of this marker, because that marker is at 73.75. That's right here. And ours is 74, so we're in the B range, which is good. We could probably conclude that we're going to get a B, right? Because it's probably unlikely that we're going to be up here. But just to make sure, let's go ahead and calculate um, uh, the mean plus one and a half standard deviations. So just like last time, we'll take our 72 plus, this time instead of 0.5, we have 1.5. That's one and a half times our standard deviation. And this time this calculates as 77.25. All right, so we were right. Let me kind of give you the big picture here. Um, our cutoff for uh, B and C was 73.75, and our cutoff for an A was 77.25, and our score, our score was 74, right? And again, this was the C range, this is the B range, and this is the A range. So we are solidly here. Uh, actually, we're not solidly. We just just kind of passed up into the B range. So according to the scale, with the standard deviation and mean that we get from these values, the person earning the 74 would be here in the B range. So they're going to earn a B, and that is the answer to this question. That person earns a B. So this is definitely a weird way to do grades, but um, the concept in here is that you're taking a set of data essentially, and you're splitting it up based on the mean plus some standard deviations or minus some standard deviations. And that concept is going to be very important for the next section. All right, so that's it for this section. Um, make sure you let me know if you have any questions. Um, definitely get used to the calculator and calculating those one variable statistics. And again, the most important part to that is very carefully entering the data. Let me know if you have any questions and keep up the good work.